Hi, thanks to everyone that's dialing in today. Uh, we're gonna wait a minute or two, but while we wait, please feel free to uh, go ahead and place yourself on mute and uh, consider um, speaker view. It's a little easier for this event. And then type in chat where you're calling in from. Wow, all over, Maryland, North Carolina, Asbury oh. Park, Oregon, the UK, this is awesome. Love to see that. All right, if you just joined us, we're gonna get ready uh, to go here in about another minute or so. Feel free to type in chat where you're calling in from. I think the UK wins the distance award. San Jose, Indy, Cincinnati, Charleston, Arcadia, it's fantastic. Another UK, this is awesome. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get us started. Happy Nurses Week 2021, and thank you all for everything that you do. I'm Dr. Bonnie Clipper, the Chief Clinical Officer at WAMBI. It is my honor to welcome you to the DAISY and WAMBI Collaborative Panel on Meaningful Recognition and the Powerful Habit of Storytelling. For today's event, if you could place yourself on mute and try to use the speaker view rather than the gallery view, it will actually make your experience a little more pleasant. And for today's agenda, Bonnie Barnes, the CEO of the Daisy Foundation will join me for a short conversation around recognition and storytelling. And then we will introduce you to two amazing Daisy honorees whose stories we are incredibly excited to share with you. And we have a 45 minute session for today. So if time permits, we will answer questions at the end of the program. So please feel free to enter your questions into chat and our WAMBI team will capture those for us. So I'm gonna dive in here and start by telling you a little bit about WAMBI. WAMBI provides a holistic real-time recognition solution that transforms the healthcare experience for patients and staff through the power of gratitude. It's gamified technology delivers real-time feedback from patients and families and other team members that recognize and motivates optimal care. With the proven ability to increase workforce engagement, reduce clinician burnout, and drive higher patient satisfaction, WAMBI improves the human experience for everyone. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna welcome Bonnie Barnes and have her share a little bit about herself and the great work that she's doing at DAISY. First, I just wanna make a little bit of a note for all of you and there aren't many Bonnies in the world. So today you actually get two of us on one call. So you should feel like that's a treat. <laughs> I'm gonna hand it off to Bonnie Barnes now to share a little bit about herself and the great work that Daisy is doing. Well, thank you, Bonnie. I always love when we have a time together to talk on our, and on my calendar, it says Bonnie times two. And I know it's gonna be a fun conversation with you. It's, it's a delight to be with you all. And I too can't wait to share the, the stories of extraordinary skill and especially compassion that our honorees um, who are featuring today will be describing. But I, yes, about me, uh, you know, I was a re retired advertising executive, happily growing wine grapes here in Sonoma Valley, California, when my husband, Mark's son, Patrick, 
died of complications of the autoimmune disease, ITP. And Mark and I had the great gift of being able to be with Pat for eight weeks in the hospital as he battled this thing we had never heard of. And when he died, as many of you probably know, we just felt compelled to say thank you to nurses for all that we had experienced in during his eight weeks in the hospital. And we wanted to say thank you, not only for the clinical excellence we had witnessed, but especially for the compassion and kindness that we had felt when we were in the hands of his very loving nurses. So we created the DAISY Foundation. DAISY stands for Diseases Attacking the Immune System. And when we started it in 1999, we never imagined that it was going to get the kind of legs that it has. We thought we could say thank you to nurses in maybe 10 hospitals around the United States. But when nurses got a hold of this concept, and I have to say, Bonnie Clipper, you are one of them, and you saw the strategic value and you saw the impact it was having on your staff, it obviously was making a difference we could not anticipate. And next thing you knew, 21 years later, we're now celebrating nurses in over 4,800 healthcare facilities and schools of nursing around the world. So that's how I spend my time. <laughs> You know, that's such an incredible story of, of passion for you and what a deeply heartfelt um, initiative that this has been. And, and you're right, you know, nurses around the world really are looking for opportunities to be lifted up and celebrated and recognized. And this is an amazing way to do that. Yeah, so thank, thank you. you for your work. Thank you. So you guys are doing an amazing job at recognizing nurses. What is exciting you the most right now? Well, you know, it's interesting what you just said about nurses looking for ways to be uplifted. When we first started this program, and I'd say for the first eight or 10 years, there was some sense of, oh, I don't need recognition and my nurses don't need recognition. And other than some pioneers like you, Bonnie, we had, we faced some immediate, um, I won't call it resistance, but lot, just a lack of understanding of why recognition could be important to nurses. What's exciting me now is that over the last several years, and especially since the start of the pandemic, our entire health system is turning its attention to the focus on well-being of staff. And the well-being of nurses, as we all know, is critically important before someone can take care of somebody else. They've got to be taken care of themselves. We know the DAISY Award has a clear connection to well-being that hearing the stories of what nurses do and feeling the celebration and the gratitude that comes through DAISY nominations is so meaningful to nurses that it contributes to their well-being, to their resilience. And, and to see the healthcare profession really turning to the importance of well-being and emotional support, physical support, psychological, moral support for the staff, that's exciting me right now. That's, that's really incredible because you hit the nail on the head. This has really been an extraordinary time and bringing gratitude and positive affirmation and recognition to nurses is so powerful and so incredibly important. So today we actually have two DAISY Award honorees that I would like to bring into our conversation and hear from them, those that are closest to the patients and are truly the ones that are doing all of the hard work. And I wanna give you a sense of how extraordinary that these nurses are. So I'm actually gonna read their nomination letters. So first I'm gonna start with the story that was written by a patient about Albert Segawini from Methodist Hospital of Southern California in Arcadia, California. So Albert, I see some of your colleagues that have dialed in. All right, so I'm gonna to get to your letter, Albert. Albert on Five North was the most warm and loving nurse that has ever taken care of me. He was so warm from the time he walked into my room and greeted me with a warm welcome. To be honest, I have never received that kind of joy or love from any other nurse. I had a heart attack and my medical care was being addressed by one of the best nurses that had ever come into my life. Albert was on top of everything from A to Z. He made me feel safe in his hands. Albert made me feel like I was part of his family, like we had known each other for years. It still warms my heart tremendously. I have to admit that I was scared and frightened at first, 
but Albert helped me with everything that I was experiencing. I feel so much better because of Albert. And when he left last night after his shift was over, I prayed that he would be back and become my nurse one more time. God answered my prayer. It felt so good to see Albert walk into my room again. Albert is one of the reasons that I am healing and God is the other reason. Thank you, Albert, for being my new friend. So Albert, thanks for joining us today. That's an amazing letter. Thank you, Bonnie. Yes, it's one of the most inspiring uh, messages I heard from one of my patients. And uh, for such a um, uh, nice uh, letter and it being broadcast to everyone on our floor during that time, it was very encouraging and it's very inspiring. It's because, you know, everyone was down during the pandemic and somehow it was a perfect time to uplift everyone's spirit. And, you know, during that last year, I guess because of the uh, isolations and quarantines and most uh, floors that we have, so it's at uh, the time they weren't giving any DAISY award, so which is pretty much, um, pretty much right is because, you know, uh, we want to make sure that everyone is safe and, and they cannot gather around. And when the time they made the announcement, it was, it was really... Um, I was really surprised, and uh, to be honest with you, that's the only time I heard that letter again, because every time I hear that letter, I get really emotional. <laughs> it's awesome. It's awesome, and I'm going to pull Brian in as well. So our second Daisy story is written by a patient's family, and that is nominating Brian Guff from Jersey Shore University Medical Center part of Hackensack Meridian Health in Neptune, New Jersey. So Brian, thank you for being with us. Thank you. And I'm gonna read your letter because it's equally powerful. Dear Brian, I'd like to thank you and all the nurses on the fifth floor who took such great care of my husband, but it's you I'd like to point out that was able to get him to listen to reason and stay. He can be a very stubborn person and with anxiety and depression added to his hard head. He is difficult to reason with at times. And those times a stranger's honest opinion and heartfelt talking to helped him to see reason. I told the kids about you and they both asked me to make sure that you know how much they appreciated you taking the time to talk to their dad like a son. You made a difference in people's lives every day, whether they're willing to admit it or not. You have made a difference in our lives and thank you so much. Brian, that's an amazing story. Yes, yes, it, it was. Um, I honestly remember the, the conversation with um, that patient and, and his wife. And um, yeah, he was, he was very anxiety ridden and I was able to reason with him and, and able to get him to stay. Um, and she was very thankful and I was doing it as if it was my own father. That's all. It was nothing out of the ordinary. It just was the, the right thing to say at the right time. And I was able to make that connection with him and he listened and, and was able to stay and got the, the healthcare that he needed. So, it, and to be recognized for it was just uh, above and beyond what I really ever expected. So I was, I was very, very happy about that. So thank you. I have to say, I, you know, I've read thousands and thousands of DAISY nominations, but the way these two were written, they're, they're specific descriptions of what you did and how you made those patients and family members feel. That's what to me made them so extra special. So congratulations to you both. So well done. Thank you very much. And thank you, thank you to your both of you for your hard work caring for patients, not just on a regular basis, but during this very challenging time. And also thank you both for taking the time out of your busy schedules to be here with us today to allow us to celebrate you and recognize how truly extraordinary you are. So I think we have a couple questions that we want to tee up for you guys to just kind of dig into this a little bit more and get a sense of how it makes you feel. Do I get to go first to ask questions? You're on. All right, thank you. Well, Brian, let me start with you. 
I'm usually the one being interviewed, so I get excited. <laughs> I get to ask somebody else some questions. I mean, I, you, you sort of alluded to this, but I'd like you to speak a little bit more about this. Did you even know you, your conversation with this patient was having the kind of impact on, on his wife and him that, that it did so that made them want to write a nomination for you? Did you know? No, to be honest with you, I was hoping it would, and, and I was hoping it would have the impact to get, really just to get him to stay. I, I just wanted him to stay, you know, he was very adamant on leaving and I, I really did everything in my willpower, um, you know, you know, medically, you know, physically just to get him comfortable. And um, that's all I wanted, you know, so to have an impact on not only him, but his, his wife and his family, I mean, for his wife to tell the kids, you know, it, it really just really solidified that what I'm, I'm doing was, was correct. And yeah. I couldn't be more thankful for that. Oh, wow. Well, your, your calling is, is so evident here. I'm so glad you've Thank chosen you. to become a nurse because you're in the place you need to be. Thank for you. Thank patients you. And for yourselves, obviously. So once, once it was announced that you were receiving the Daisy Award, what did it feel like to you? It, it honestly felt, it didn't even feel real, to be honest with you, because as I stated earlier, I said, I, said, I, I treat every patient like it's my family. I, I want them to feel like they have a family member taking care of them. I want them to be kept up to date and everything else. So for me, I really just felt like I was doing what I should be doing and I, every day. So to be awarded with this, just it really felt amazing. And, and to have my unit behind me and my manager behind me and, and, and the, 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 um, the, the congratulations and the praise I got, it was, just, it was just really extra. But it really, like I said, just really solidifies in my mind that a, I'm, I'm in the right field and B, I'm just doing the right thing. There you go. I'm so happy that you didn't use that expression. Oh, I didn't do anything special. I'm just doing my job. Is that <laughs> something that we, we used to hear? We don't hear quite so much anymore, but we used to hear that all the time. But you didn't say that because you know you're doing the right thing. And that's, that's the best thing you can feel, isn't it? Well, congratulations. Yes. Thank you so much. Okay, Bonnie, your turn. <laughs> So, Brian, how has becoming a DAISY Award honoree impacted how you practice or how you care for patients? Well, like I said, it solidified in my mind that I was doing, I'm doing the right thing. Um, I'm not, I, how I am outside of work is how I am in the hospital. I, I'm, I'm true. I'm, I'm real. I, I keep people up to date because I know what it's like to have family in the hospital. They're scared, and especially during times of COVID, you know, they don't, they, we didn't have visitors at one point. So these, you know, these patients had no one to speak up for them, no one. And we had to be those advocates for them. So to be recognized, you know, not just, not just on my floor, but on a national level as something as big as Wambi and Daisy, it really just made it feel like I was doing the right thing. And, and honestly, I just will keep doing what I'm doing. Well, and again, congratulations. So has this put a little bit more pep in your step? Has this helped your unit sort of feel a little bit uh, kind of some good mojo here? Abs absolutely, because I, I know of uh, three, uh, four or five more nurses that also won the, nom uh, the, the um, DAISY Award on our, on our unit too. So it really kind of I feel I, I feel like kind of um, rubbed off on them a little bit. But at the same time, I work with, with great co-workers. And honestly, I could say that we all provide the same care to these patients that, uh, you know, I want to say I'm surprised they won, but you know what, they, they deserve it just as much. They're, they're wonderful people to work with. So this speaks to such a fantastic culture as well. So that's amazing. And it's so great for not only the nurses and everyone else on the care team, it's fantastic for the patients. So thank yeah. you for sharing your story. Thank you so much. All right, Bonnie, I'm going to hand it back to you. Well, excellent. Albert, now you're in the hot seat. I, I, I'm touched by your emotion. I will tell you that your story touched me emotionally as well. And, and it's just how beautifully written those beautiful words were said for you. And I can see why that really moved you. I have to ask you the same question though. At the time that you were delivering this care, did you know what a difference you were making for this gentleman? Actually, it's hard to recall that exact moment for this particular patient since it all happened August of last year. Oh. And it was only two months ago that I got recognized with a DACI. 
So to be honest with you, I've been I took care of a lot of patients during that year, and I cannot even recognize their face or even their name. So every day, when a nurse goes to work, their goal is to perform their duty to the best of their ability. Hopefully, they can make a positive impact on a patient's recovery during their hospital stay. But last year was totally, totally different. It was a very unique and challenging situation uh, for the nurses, patients, and including their families. Due to the many limitations and uncertainties we all have to deal with. But when I learned that it was during the height of the pandemic that I got the, I got the nomination by one of my patients, I got really emotional. I was remembering the many sacrifices we all have to go through while performing our daily work, like the nationwide lack of PPEs, ventilators, and, and even staffing shortages due to healthcare workers getting infected by the COVID infection. It's really a worse, it's really a nurse worst nightmare. But despite the tough situations everyone's going through, our job as nurses must go on. This does, not, this does not give us any re excuse or reason not to perform our duty. Hmm. So sometimes when nurses are so busy, we tend to forget the emotional aspect of care, which is a vital part of a patient's recovery. Whether you're dealing with a patient, a family member, simple things like asking how their day was, helping them make phone calls to loved ones, or even sharing a good laugh can really impact their overall, overall experience and the quality of care, which they receive during the hospital stay. So when you send a patient home or say goodbye for the day and they mention how grateful they are to have you as their nurse, only then you realize you have made, uh, you had made a meaningful impact on their life and that you did a good job. Wow. Wow, you are singing my song here, Albert, I gotta tell you. And you know, it's those little things that you just described that are so magnified when we as patients and families are in a hospital and, and we're in an alien environment. It's an environment you know so well, but it's completely alien to us. And as, as you said before, Brian, we're alone now with the pandemic and oh my gosh, those little things just become your lifeline to humanity. And the, 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 um, the touching that you were able to give, not only, I'm sure, physically, but also most importantly, and just the relationship you created through those little things. Man, Daisy nurses through and through, the two of you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. And I, I think these stories are incredibly powerful and profound, right? You guys are going to work every day, but you truly are extraordinary. It's, it's just amazing what you're able to do and how you're able to care for people, not only their physical and mental needs, but really kind of dig deeply from an emotional perspective to make these connections. So Albert, I'm going to ask you, how becoming a DAISY Award honoree has impacted your nursing practice? Well, to be honest with you, I wouldn't be here right now if I didn't make the biggest decision in my career. That was 14 years ago. I've always wanted to be the first engineer in my family. So I ended up getting a degree in computer engineering. That was my first degree. However, things didn't turn out, turn out well as planned. Going home every day from work feels like something's missing, though the pay was definitely higher than what most employees get. It wasn't about the money, actually. I felt that there was no satisfaction on whatever job I had at the time. Actually, my parents wanted to be, at the very start, to become a nurse, to become a nurse just like my brother, my aunts, uncles, and cousins. So finally, my wife, who is also a nurse, eventually convinced me to change my career. And from there on, it was a life-changing decision. Over the years, I've been very fortunate to have worked with, in different hospitals with dedicated and passionate nurses who also received the DC Awards and in turn helped me cultivate my profession and improve my profession. So when I got my own DC, my goal was to inspire others as well, to go beyond their call of duty just like how my mentors motivated me. And at the end of the day, if they get to own their own daily, my mission has been a success. 
And I wanted them how it feels. I wanted them to know how it feels that once you start making a difference in your, in your patient's life, it will also affect yours. And it's the most rewarding experience that no amount of money can buy. I hope you know how truly inspiring and amazing that both of you are. I mean, it's incredible to me. And I'm grateful, Albert, that you're no longer an engineer, that we have <laughs> you as a nurse, because you're exactly what we need in nursing. So what an amazing story. Thank you for that. So you, um, I I'm going to turn to questions. And if you have any questions for um, Bonnie Barnes or Albert or Brian or even myself, please feel free to put those into chat and we'll make sure that we answer your questions. Albert or Brian, are there any other sort of thoughts or anything else that you'd like to share while we have a moment? No, really just, I mean, just to say thank you to everybody. You know, I, I yes, I won this, you know, the, the nomination at the Daisy Award, but you know, I'm, I'm, as I said earlier, I'm not, I'm not even a nurse a year yet. And that just goes to show the amount of support that I have on my floor from, from my, my manager, Mary Bell, who has, you know, had, had our backs throughout the whole pandemic um, from my preceptors to my PCTs to environmental, ev everybody should be a part of nurses week. So really hats off to everybody. Uh, on this, So I'm sorry. Did you just say you were not, a, you've been a nurse for less than a year? Yeah, I'm, I'm like Albert. This is a second career for me. So I, I just. Oh, no, that may yeah. be a, a record for receiving the Daisy Award, Brian. What, what were you doing before this? Um, I was actually um, a sales rep with Anheuser-Busch. Uh, <laughs> oh, doing, doing, doing marketing for them. So, um, yeah. So I, I like, um, like Albert, just something felt missing. And um, I, I was in healthcare for a little while. I joined the volunteer organization in my town and yeah, it became an EMT and that's where I kind of fell in love with everything and, you know, went to nursing school and that was that. Oh my gosh, what a gift to patient care the two of you are to, and to think that you could feel that hole and that you acted on it. So I'm going to tell you my little story. I mentioned before um, that I was a retired advertising executive. Talk about an industry that you could have a big hole in your heart about, you know, that it's not, not truly fulfilling and rewarding um, except for all the pro bono work I was able to do. The money was good, but I spent a long time working at something that I, I knew I was doing. I loved it at the time, but it wasn't, I didn't have the same sense of fulfillment I do now. And I think that's the same story we're hearing from the two of you. Mm. So I'm so glad you were able to make that shift. Yeah. You know, it's really pretty amazing, the themes here, right? We actually worked with your organizations and, um, Kate read through several nominations and Brian and Albert, yours are the ones that bubbled to the top. So dare I point out, you're both men, which is interesting enough in its own stead. You're both second careerists. And I think I heard you both say that you each have a wife who is also a nurse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. I think yeah. that's a first, Bonnie. I think that's remarkable. And two Bonnies at the same time. Look at all these things, right? <laughs> Who could want more? <laughs> wow. Well, Albert and Brian and Bonnie, you as well, thank you for coming on this panel today. It is such an important journey for us to understand how we can recognize and celebrate the work that nurses do and you're extraordinary, you're exemplary. So it was just amazing to have you here with us today. So thank you all. Thank you very much for having us. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I would like to thank uh, Serena Kelly of Wambi, the two Bonnets, and the Data Foundation for inviting us for this wonderful event. You know, uh, you guys, both Wambi and Daisy Foundation, are always raising the bar of excellence for nursing. You know, nursing is not for everyone, but as long as you put your heart and passion into it, as long as you love what you're doing, you know, you're going to be there for a very long time. And hopefully, you know, you enjoy working as a nurse. You, wa you want to share that inspiration to others so that, you know, when your kids, when they become, grow old, when they grow old, they would like to be a nurse just like you. And, you know, someone, you're in good hands when you grow old. So someone, has, someone can take care of you. You know, someone will have to follow your footsteps and eventually, you know, 
he would say uh, you did a good did a good job mm-hmm. you did a good life and you 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 end up like having to enjoy your career well said albert well said and thank you again for being with us today and we would love to give all of you a glimpse of our new wambi platform and the daisy integration at our virtual booth and get your insights and feedback on what we've built Anyone who takes the time to give Wambi feedback on our new release, we will provide a donation to the DAISY Foundation. Keep a lookout for the post-event email to book a time at our virtual booth. You can also find the booking link in the chat box. And again, I'm deeply grateful on Wambi's behalf. So thank you both for the profoundly strong and amazing stories that you shared with us today. Bonnie, it's always a pleasure to have Bonnie times two on another call. So thank you as well. Thank you. And I hope everybody comes in to see the demonstration of this incredible new platform. We've had a glimpse at it. It is really cool. I think it's going to get great responses. So I hope everybody comes in and gives lots of good feedback. Awesome. And thank you for that. And thank you all for attending. And that includes our program for today. Thank you all very much. Thank you.